up, say crack. <laughs> I'm Kino. We over here chilling, local astronaut style, working on some records. That's what we doing. Soaking in this LA energy. Mm-hmm. So nice and wonderful palm trees and good weather. Breathing in good secondhand smoke. Yeah. Good secondhand smoke. First secondhand smoke here sometimes. Nature's incense. Yes, it is. Chilling with the homie. Wow, Drew. What up, man? What up? Man, yeah. like, not to even date myself, but I've been <laughs> rapping pretty much since the seventh grade. Like, far as, like, taking it, like, really seriously, like, yo, I'm writing my raps. I'm, I'm gonna do this rap shit. I'm gonna go to the studio and throw a lot of money into rapping. Since the seventh grade, my first rap name was MC Revenge. Then I went from... MC Revenge to Rap Master Ray. Uh-huh. Cause like my middle name's Ray Now. And then when I went from Rap Master Ray to Ray Now with the accent over the E. Like Kwame was big at the right, time. Right, yeah, so with the poker. Yeah, I yeah, thought it was French. Yeah. Um so accents, like, man. Yeah. Yeah. Then I went from that to um head crack. Cause like I used to shoot dice all the time. Like my friends in high school, they were older than me. So they're working, they got jobs, I had no jobs. I'm bouncing from house to house. I would get like my little lunch money or like, you know, I was on like on the free lunch for a little bit at school. So I would sell my tickets, get the money, money. take the money, get the shoot dice with the money, mm -hmm. use the money to get albums, mm -hmm. instrumentals to rap on, Z Cavarici pants, shiny shoes, whatever yeah. the flavor of the day is, yeah. you know, like back then. So, you know, that's how I got the nickname. Yeah, I got my, 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 well, I started rhyming about the same about the same year, really, about seventh grade, and really, really, really went to the start going to the studio about eighth grade, like really actually going to the actual studio and stuff, um, and started out b-boying and dancing and you know battling, doing all that, man, and, and that's what led me into you know really, really, really writing and really wanting to be on the microphone because I'd be kind of rhyming to myself while I was doing things, and everybody be like, yo, you can rhyme, you know, why don't you? really take that seriously as key you know we kids but they telling me that so started doing it and uh, my first rhyme name what was it kmc because those are my initials so it was just kmc and then it went um to smooth s-m-o-o-v-e and then it went to one which is spelled out one and then um in high school it was uh it became keynote because you know, the, my rhyme partner at the time, he's like, every time I see a cypher or some type of commotion going on at school, you're always in the middle. And he's like, he's, you, you're the one always rhyming. And he goes, when we go shows, let's be real, man. Everybody that knows you, they come to see you. And then that's how I, they end up getting introduced to me. And he was, you're the keynote speaker of the group, man. And he called me literally, like, randomly one night, just randomly. And I was like, yeah. He's like, that's what your name need to be, man. Stop switching your name. And, like, hung up. <laughs> and that was it. And then, like, my family called me Key, and they still call me Key, my moms and my folks. That's how that happened. I feel like I've been cast out of, like, every other like, aspect of hip-hop other than rapping and DJing. Like, I used to want to break dance. But, like, I had, like, the rhythm of Elaine from Seinfeld. It's um, weird because he'll be, he'll be right in pocket with his rhymes. Like, even me, so I'm trying to find rhythm sometimes, you know, where I'm trying to land right... He just, like, with no problem, just... But then when we're on stage... He's bumping into me. He's bumping into Trav I, the other member of the group, you know what I mean? And it's like, we gotta watch. Like, we, have a, we actually have a system that we do on stage to know where crack is so that we know not to get hit. Yeah. Straight up. And he be like, not on beat. And so, even when we're doing routines and stuff on stage, I, I, mean, I have to watch the other dude because Trav I, because he's the white dude. He be mad on rhythm. And, me, and I'm a little Mexican dude. We'd be like, and cracks. And be throwing me off. I danced the snare, man. I it's sad. something, hey. but but he be right in pocket no, I, with his rhymes. I used to want to like like dance more than I wanted to rap. Like you know, like I wanted like I used to watch like all the breaking movies that came out. Like I wanted to be able to complete like a windmill, you know, and it just it just wasn't in the cards. But, no, I I, but, I, I, like, I definitely fuck on beat. I fuck on beat. I just can't dance on beat because I don't know I don't know which instrument I'm looking for like to keep the time and the rhythm but he knows like, that in, he knows that, that vagina situation. instrument he knows that rhythm <laughs> you know but he knows that nah, like the, everything else is great in that department uh, you know <laughs> help me produce children you know what I'm saying so he be making kids yeah man like I've like, seen him yeah like a fucking Play-Doh maker man but uh but yeah just when it comes to you know competitive dancing and just like but he, you know he has heart 
Yeah, you know, if you dance with spirit, like sometimes people just let you make it. On spirit, on his and spirit. You, he has the spirit of and, a dancer. And if you dance long enough, you're on beat for a little bit. Fucking true. So it's just about when you catch it. Because you, 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 you'll catch him. And I've seen him start, you know, he'd be, oh, okay, shit, fuck it. I ain't worried about crack. Then I'll look at him in a minute and then it's like, oh. Like even in any video that you see me dancing in, like, like our group videos, like they edit that shit and slide it over to make it on beat. It works out. That's magic. Um, well, you know, there's a lot of dope b-boys that came from the Bronx, I believe, like Crazy Legs and shit. And yeah. So, um, it just, you know, just, it ain't for everybody, man. Okay. LL Cool J can't dance. Queens. <laughs> Queens, Queens dude. But, uh, nah, nah, nah. Like, you know, people, like, you know, like, it was like the shit of the Bronx. We was hanging out with, like, Planet Asia the other day. It was mm -hmm. like, you, usually, like, people from the Bronx, like, have no, like, sense of fashion. <laughs> like, he's like, he's like, I can look at, I can, I can look and tell by the way someone's dressed. And he even said even now, he was like, like <laughs> then the look on his face made me. I was like, damn, yo. Like, why are you Like, you did not approve. Yeah, like, it just as a oh. Bronx nigga, like, you know, like, I like, you know, even before he said that, I was like, man, Planet Age is dressed very nice. That's what I'm doing. I don't even know sweat. Man, this is fucking nice, man. But you know what? You don't be dressing bad, like, and, and I love Crack known forever, but like, yo, back in the gap, sometimes he would dress like a Jamaican. And bless Jamaicans, but I mean, like, not like a Jamaicans now. I'm talking like maybe a Jamaican from 89. Like the Mark for Death? Mark, uh, uh, That's what I'm thinking of. <laughs> like Mark the for Steve, Death. The Steven Seagal movie Jamaicans? Yeah, the dude with the green eyes. Yeah. Screwface. Yeah, Screwface. He used to dress like Screwface. You know, because I used to shop with a Jamaicans. <laughs> Fucking right, you did. I used to be on you White did. Plains Road. Like, God, well, there you go. That but, makes sense yeah. now, but yeah, but now he's, he's good now. Even though he's from the Bronx. Because you get a headache wearing a fitted baseball cap when you have like he legit dreads. would man it'd be a mark yeah, yeah, like, yeah, oh. you have these perforated lines and shit like you look like a, like a fucking graham cracker like you know like you could be separated you know from head to dome like dude would find like a perfect hat and we'd be out on the road or something we'd go to like some place with some dope hats and he'd be like oh and he'd make that shit work he would jam it down the fitted hats used to be on the last snap holding on for dear life when I had my dress. But uh, but yeah, but the knitted cap, you just tuck your dreads in there. It looks kind of neat. You know, you can show up and give a speech. You know, I think Sway it was one of the ones who really like on the mainstream like of, of hip hop. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like really made the knitted hats pop for dudes with dreads. Didn't he have like his line, or like didn't he have somebody that made him? I don't even know. Some him, and I give Just Ice a little credit, mm. but I don't think he had dreads. I just think he liked to wear it, just like that big hat. Big like, hat with the flat hat with the African like Allison Williams. Yeah, you know, she used to wear her hair like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But um. Yeah, it's just, it was comfortable. It was breathable, especially if you get like one of the mesh ones. I mean, it's neat. Like, just, you know, just imagine, like, you know, your head getting stuck to Velcro and shit. You know, like, you're wearing a hoodie and you think you're pulling a drawstring and it's like actually, like, all types of bad shit. But then it has to protect you. Anything that's mesh always just, I'm good on it. I don't. Well, it was like, it was like, it was breathable. It was breathable material. Like, it is breathable. It wasn't like mesh. You wouldn't say mesh. Like, yeah, I had mesh shirts. That's that back to the point. <laughs> you gotta think about it though. There's been like a lot of three men rap groups throughout history. Mm -hmm. um, Beastie Boys, mm -hmm. Treacherous Three. Mm -hmm. Brand new being started as a quartet, ended up a trio, then quartetted back up again, depending on how you look at it. Um, the Locks. The locks. One of the hardest three men rap groups of all time. Mm -hmm. Tribe Called Quest. A lot of times people call it a quartet, but you know, Ali Shah, Shihi Mama doesn't rap, but Jerobi eventually yeah, raps, raps and raps sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I, I give them uh, the I three. give them trio. De La? I, uh, De La Soul. De La Soul. Because Maceo raps sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about Run DMC. Mm -hmm. Jam Master J was the DJ, but on pause, I'm Jay. I make up the tray. And check out the dance that I display. Like, you know, he would rhyme from time to time, get from behind him. Mm -hmm. Onyx. Was Onyx. That's right, yeah, Onyx. Trio. Because Big DS was the DJ, but he passed away. Mm -hmm. He went on as a trio. Mm -hmm. um, KMD. KMD. Was a trio. KMD was a trio. Um, there were a lot of notable trios, but. I In the keep, history. But right now, Migos is dominating the whole trio rap shit right now. Um, it could have something to do also with just like chemistry because it's, it, you can find chemistry between two people a lot of times, but it's hard to find the chemistry between three people ooh. in a creative in a creative sense. Can I cite the biggest selling rap trio of all time? Oh, I know who you're gonna cite. Who? Oh, Motherfucking Fogies. You're right. Yeah, like the best selling trio of all time. But look what happens. A couple of them get along. Not all three can get along, especially in the creative. In a creative realm, like with the difference with us, even if we weren't in the group, we're gonna be homies anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? We'd be homies without this, even if we didn't rhyme and we're working off of somewhere. 
that's who we would be. You know we were, what I mean? We were the three weirdos that found each other in the debris of the other situations that we were in. <laughs> I, I left the group that I was in. Um, he left the group he was mm. in. Travis Travis left the group, group he was in. in. And we just all found each other because we was just on some A like B like shit. Yeah, so either way it would have worked out. And I think that's the difference. <laughs> but you know, when other people get together, yo, it's rap now. I have different attitudes and different egos, different levels of those egos. Sometimes it's not good for the long haul. They just can't do it. Or one less person wants to do this over here, per- it just don't work. But when you have a common kind of goal, you have you understand everybody's different, but you have a common goal and you work within that realm, it'll work. But a lot of people they don't have that. They're going for self regardless. Even if they say they're not, they are. Yeah. Travis Porter was also a trio. Um, with us, the thing is, like, I, we don't have so much ego. You have to kind of tone that down to where it's like, do I got to go first for this reason or for that reason? We try to do what's best for the overall, what's going to sound good on the record or what we think is going to meld. Because, like, like, Trav, I might have, like, the illest verse on that song, right? But he's not going to be like, I want to go first because that might not sound right because of his voice with my voice and his voice. So he might sound better because of the way the hook is, so he might go better second, or he might go better third. He might have the best verse, but we going, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and sometimes, yeah, you might not get hurt at the end of the song, but it doesn't matter. You on the joint and we're not tripping, we're not kids. So, oh, you didn't hear me. It's kind of like, yo, I'm on that joint and I know I'm, I'm dope. Yeah, we, I mean, we what's good for the out. song? Like, what's good for it? Like, what's going to be the overall? We don't mm-hmm. really trip on, it's the overall, you know what yeah. I mean? It's just like, sometimes, like, just the compass, the creative compass points it in the right direction where it needs to be. Because mm. sometimes I can write a rhyme and like, and once I lay it, I'm like, yeah, that, that's a second verse, that's a first verse, mm-hmm. that's a third verse. I just kind of know it when I hear it. We know it when we hear it. So it's like, kinda, ah, yeah, move, sometimes I'll come up and be like, yo, around. dude, I'm going to go first on this one. I just feel it a certain way and then you come like that. Or he'll be like, yo, man, I went third. You and Trap do this and y'all go, you know what I'm saying? We call There's each other. There's been times where I thought, yo, my verse should go, uh, and then I hear one of, you know what? Yeah, a lot of times I'll get the I'll get the I'll hear one version and then I'll get it back and it'll have be moved around. I'm like, oh okay, that should sound better. You know, I thought I should have went, oh, uh, but yeah, that should sound better. You know what I mean? For any up and coming group, if you want to try to have conflict resolution and have a successful group, you always got to be open with your group members. Always let your intentions be known. Mm-hmm. If somebody's pulling you to the side and trying to like make you deviate or do something different, let them know. Or, and it doesn't necessarily mean don't do it, but if you're doing it for the, you know, for the best interest of the group and everybody can benefit, then that's a good thing. But always be open and honest with your teammates because you're going to see them again. Mm-hmm. And that's right. And when you're, in, when you're being creative with what you're doing, whatever it may be in your group, make sure you also be open in that situation. Be open to criticism. And don't look at everything negative. Look at it as like, yo, my man's trying to help me shine. If you hear a mistake that the other guy's making, like, you know, don't grab that, be like, but give him positive reinforcement, as they say, and that way he'll be able to shine. The more he shines, the more you shine. You know what I'm saying? Back each other up. Be his hype man. Let them be your hype man, he or her, whatever the situation may be. Every song isn't a rap contest. Mm-mm. You know, everybody can shine on the record at the same time. So don't be like, yo, I'm going to make this dude look like shit. Bar, time bar, out. bar, 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 bar. Work on making songs that are going to matter. Have a little bit of a lasting power that, you know, you know. It's going to carry over. Make a song. Disposable mu- don't make disposable music. Mm-hmm. You can do that from time to time, but make something that's going to matter in a few years. And it doesn't always have to be a heavy topic. It can be a jam, too. Mm-hmm. Just make sure that jam's a jam. And try to write together as a group. If you're in a if group. If you can. Yeah, you know, like, it's just something about, like, bouncing ideas, creative energies off of your bandmates that makes the record sound together. It's the difference between you making low-end theory or love movement. And everybody has their own process and let them have their own process. And that way, there's no ill feelings. Like, you should be doing it like this. Because I've been in groups like that. Where you should be doing... And it's, everybody has their own thing. Once you let the other person foster what they're doing, it just makes everything much more easier and a better working environment too. And it's cool to write songs for like the entire group. Like, like say if you if there's like a song, an idea. Like, say if you got like a story or something, mm-hmm. and like sometimes maybe it's hard to translate that to some have somebody else translate yeah. what you're seeing. Like you guys are in the same group. Mm-hmm. Like you look at everybody who's ever been great making music. LL Cool J, Drake, Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. Um, just anybody. No one really does it all alone, except J. Cole. Like, the nigga loves to do it alone. Yeah, he like, does. He, 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 he don't take baths, he kicks it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna be by myself. Yeah. 
That's what J. Cole does. Yeah, it's it's cool. Like you guys are on the same team. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter who wrote the raps. Just just make sure you when you, when you spit it, you spit it correctly. That's all. You have to show up for the for the game. You can't let everybody write other stuff for you and not be able to, you know. Well, he wrote it for me, so I'm on laid back. He <laughs> let do nothing. No, you gotta show up, you know what I'm saying? You gotta show up for the fight. Yeah. And be on time. Oh, always be on time. Be on time, because if you make everybody else look bad if you late as hell. That's about yeah. it. Yeah. And wear 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 rubber, bro. Fuck up the group. You about to go on tour, but now you gotta stick around and wait because you, you, your wife's about to have a litter. Oh, shit.